Crack Morning Show unit was sent to Key Radio Studios to communicate hope to a world lost in sin. These folks escape from eternal death to life found in Jesus Christ. Today, saved by grace, they survive as heralds of hope. You have a sin problem, and only Jesus can help. If you can find them, maybe you can listen to Mike and Heather in the Morning with Pastor Steve Pearson of Redemption Hill Church in Saratoga Springs, Utah. So, Steve, you must have been that student in college where it's like, oh, just under the wire. I, I made it on time. It counts. <laughs> Are you going to give me a tardy slip because I wasn't in my seat when the bell rang? <laughs> okay. Okay. Intro's going, and Steve is in the door. We got it. He wins. <laughs> Well, he's but usually he's it. usually late. Well, yeah, he's, but he's right on time. You know what? Though he is dependable, right? Yeah, you he know is. what? If yep. if they would build the bridge across the lake, it wouldn't be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> all the way with, with the <laughs> island in the middle. Yeah, exactly. Or maybe we can have somebody donate a speedboat, and I can yeah. just dock it. In, in maybe you should get one of those amphibic vehicles, oh, like a, a duck, or so it's like a, a, a boat with wheels. Or, Grant, maybe I should leave my house 10 minutes earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like the whole idea of maybe having a key radio private jet. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> or a helicopter, wouldn't that wait, be fun? Wait, the, the, our, our, our bookkeeper is here, so we shouldn't be talking about <laughs> Yeah, we're I don't know, there was a, a cool car audience. in, uh, what was that, uh, From Russia With Love, that was like the, the car that turned into a sub. Oh yeah, yeah. I yeah. think you should. Yeah, you should that's get actually that. the, on the, the Incredibles number two, brother. That's oh, uh, <laughs> I. I <laughs> How about Chitty Chitty Bang Bang? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Or are you ten minutes early? We'd be fine. <laughs> oh, but I'm glad that you're here. Did you have a great weekend? Wonderful weekend. Yeah. Lovely mm-hmm. and you know, lovely. Look at what's look at look at what being a Christian has done to me, Mike. I used to say really really wrong things, and now I use words like lovely and, and being loved and delightful. You don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> it just comes out. Yeah. It oh, did, it did. Oh, okay, got to share a story. This is a Utah story. Perhaps you've seen this, but Fox News caught wind of it. Um, the headline is Utah restaurant owner appears to spray cigarette smoker in face with fire extinguisher. <laughs> Seriously. Hmm. Seriously. And it, it says it appears. I'm looking at the video. I'm like, no, he did it. He did it. <laughs> <laughs> There's no appears about it. But what happened was uh, there. Just in Salt Lake City, there were some folks, and they were smoking outside of the building, but there's that 25-foot away from thing, you know, that Mm. there's a law, and the restaurant owner's like, you're not 25 feet away, and then people are getting all excited, and you know how those things kind of escalate. It escalated. And then Mm -hmm. one of the smokers said, oh, yeah, well, what are you going to do about it kind of thing, and he puts a cigarette in his mouth, and, well, dude has a fire extinguisher with him, the restaurant (laughs) owner does, and he's like, I'm going to put that thing out. He's like, oh, yeah, and basically... He put it in his mouth and says, what you could do about it? And he hits him. I mean, with like sprays him with a fire extinguisher. And but the OK, <laughs> I, I have so many thoughts like just that, you guys. That's you're one way to put a cigarette out. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you guys, you're grown ups. Would you stop stuff like this? And of course, like, oh, you know what? I was in the moment and I probably shouldn't have reacted that way. And blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, ah. um, and then here's the funny part. <laughs> this, this smoker. Um, said he was experiencing shortness of breath and headaches from the chemicals he inhaled. And my first thought was, well, from the cigarettes <laughs> from the extinguisher. <laughs> like, okay, we're just losing our minds here. So um, people, 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 behave yourselves. Be grownups. And if it's 25 feet away, by the way, and... Um, and and somebody says, you know, you're not quite there. Just take two steps back. What's the big deal? Mm. What's the big deal? Yeah, it's the pride of man. Doesn't pride want of man. to be told what to do. Pride of man. And that's why we need Jesus is because <laughs> mm-hmm. we need humility. And um, the Lord gives that to us. Um, but we have to come to that part, don't we? We need to be humble and realize that we are sinful, fallen, prideful, nasty little creatures. And we need a Savior. And that Savior is Jesus Christ. So. Oh, interesting story. Did you find anything in the no. news that? Okay. No. I thought mine was Nothing. good enough. Yeah. Yeah. I'm still laughing about yeah, I'm, that. I'm, I'm kinda... I inhaled chemicals and now I have shortness of breath. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to laugh all day about My that. My lungs are totally destroyed <laughs> now. <laughs> <laughs> so, Grant is in the studio with us again this morning and he's running the controls and pushing all our buttons. Did you have a good weekend? Um, It was okay. Yeah. It w- Okay. Yeah. I did weekend stuff. Which we're, is not going into work. So yeah, we're at that time of year where it's cold in the morning yeah. and sweating in the afternoon. Mm-hmm. But the weather was incredible yesterday. I was like, man, this is if you talk to say like this all the time, that would be awesome. But we all know, and we're all gonna 
bow our heads here in a moment for a moment of silence for the next four or five months that's coming up where we're all going to be freezing. Do you know that today is the first day of autumn? Is it really? Mm -hmm. So it is officially fall. Now we can break out the pumpkin spice latte and (laughs) the sweater. I knew, yeah. I knew, Grant, you were going to be excited about <laughs> oh, yeah. A couple of things that I just need to share with you. Uh, coming up September 27th, this is at Centerpoint Church. They're um, the women's ministry, um, and they have a fall event called Revive 2019. And um, <laughs> if you would like to be a part of that, it looks like it's a couple of days. There's a Friday evening session and a Saturday morning session. You would have to go to their website uh, to register and get lunch ordered uh, by the 24th, which is tomorrow. Um, but it looks like it's going to be great. They'll have some speakers. They're going to have some fellowship. It's going to be wonderful. And so Centerpoint Church is what you want there. Um, and then also flip your calendar and then flip it again. Uh, November 2nd, uh, Grace Baptist Church is going to have an event called Purposeful Parenting. And more on that later, but I want you to put that on your calendar right now. So there. And what, what, what is the purpose of parenting? <laughs> well, it's to we, actually we work yourself out Can we go to a break vagina. right now before we even go down? Yeah, right. Well, I'm sure you'll find it there as well. And don't forget, of course, October 12th, um, we do have the 0.5K that's coming up. In and your weather, Heather, you called it silly. It is silly. Okay. Isn't it silly? It's kind of silly, I guess. It's silly. October 12th is that's the... October 12th. Um, from what time? Register... Register, though, on the 29th, by the 29th of this month. That's like this coming Sunday. So we make sure that you have a donut waiting for you and um, a T-shirt. It's in the morning, right? It's in the morning. It starts, uh, race time is at 9 o'clock, check in 8.30. And then in the afternoon from 4 to 6, if they want to make their way out to the Silver Lake Amphitheater in, in Eagle Mountain, we are having a community worship night. And so um, Redemption Hills hosting it. And so... Yeah, make it a full day, and we will have hot chocolate and probably donuts, too. So, you know, you can... Okay, you have my heart. (laughs) I'm going there, too. Now, if you don't have donuts, you're in so much trouble. (laughs) Yeah, there's a lot of cool things that are happening. So um, put those things on your calendar, and we will make sure to announce them again, or just give us a call. That sounds like fun. Are you going to, like, do some preaching, too, or just music? No, we're going to, yeah, we're going to... You're not going to dance, are you? No, no, no. I'm excited because my daughter (laughs) is going to be in town, and, you know, when you're... Oh, she's a talented young lady. When your adult kids move out, you just long for the moments when they can come back, and you can just kind of soak in some of their presence. And mm-hmm. so she's going to come back for the weekend. You don't want them to live with you. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just checking. Just checking. Oh, my. my what are friend, we doing today? We Well, today we are going to have more story time. Uh, we're doing this for two weeks. Last week, uh, we just picked out some stories from the Bible. Uh, we started with Naaman. Did, did, come on, Heather. They weren't from your Bible. They were from your kid's book. Your kid's story book. So I'm getting this warm feeling right now. Like if you could play some cool children's music and maybe I can grab some hot chocolate and sit on your lap. <laughs> you could share with me well, the story. Weird really fast. <laughs> I'm not ready for that. Just, uh, I think I Papa, to will you tell me a story? <laughs> <laughs> talked about Naaman on Monday, talked about uh, the loaves and fishes, um, baby Moses, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and then Zacchaeus on Friday. Today, we're going to talk about Abraham Stops a Fight, and this is from my childhood Bible story book. Yes, it wasn't a Bible, but it was. It, it's what helped me to understand the Bible a little bit more. That thing looks old, Heather. <laughs> <laughs> It's loved, Steve, not old. It was new when she got it. (laughs) Wow, you got here early today. (laughs) See what happens when I show up early and I'm on time? (laughs) Let me read this to you, and then we'll have to go to music so I can smack Steve over the head with my book here. Uh, Abraham looked at the cattle on the hill. God is good, he thought. Everything there made him think of God's goodness. Then Abraham heard shouting. His servants and Lot's servants were fighting over the grassland. Each servant wanted his master to have the best. <clears throat> well, Abraham called to Lot. Why should we quarrel when God has been so good to us? Let us make sure there will be peace. You choose the land you want. What is left will be mine. How'd you like that? That's pretty good. Thank you. Uh, mm-hmm. Lot liked You it. sounded just like me. <laughs> Lot liked Abraham's way of making peace. Well, of course he did, right? After looking over the land, Lot chose the valley. There was much green grass and cool water for his animals. On the hill land, there was little water and green grass. But in his heart, Abraham felt good. 
To live in peace was better than having the best land in the country. The story is from Genesis chapter 13. Nice little story, kind of a peacemaker, peacekeeper kind of thing. Uh, But there is more to the story than that. And that's why Steve is here. And we are going to go to some music. If you want to be a part of the conversation or to comment or, you know, whatever, just let us know that you're there. 855-539-4583. Give us a text. Key Radio, Life Unlocked, Truth Unleashed. This is Mike and Heather in the morning with Pastor Steve of Redemption Hill Church in Saratoga Springs. And we're just starting into the story. And it, and Heather introduced it as a, a kid's story because it came from her kid's book, and she kind of read that version of it. But there's a, a a better version of it, and it comes from the Word of God, which we should be refer- referring to for everything, right? Mm-hmm. Everything for life and everything. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, it is the Word of God. And so the, we're there. We're in, in uh, Genesis. Pull out your Bible. And are you going to start in 13? Are you going to back up and give us some context, or what's what your plan there? Um. I was going to let you tell me what you guys wanted to do. We could start in chapter three. I, I so loved Heather's Heather's storybook that I want that to kind of be the the foundation of what we build on, Mike. Oh my goodness! <laughs> oh wow! Who invited you? You are just in rare form today. You, you know, one of the things about this is it really it draws out real life. It draws out humanity. You know. You, you've got this thing where you've got, what, 7 billion people on the planet, right? And and people come from so many different walks of life, right? They come from different social economical backgrounds. They, you know, they, they grew up different. They have different attitudes, different likes, different loves. I mean, it's just a, you've got this just mass of humanity that are so different. And then when you come to Christ, it's like you're all thrown into the same bucket and you're told to love one another and get along, right? And it almost seems like it's a cruel experiment, right? Because <laughs> it's like you're you're having to learn what it means to resolve conflict and die to yourself and you're rubbing people the wrong way. And it's just, you know, and, and in Christ, it's the, it's the only thing that could possibly bring that much diversity together and bring unity. Because in the world, we just segregate. We have our friends. They like this music. They like that. They live there. They drive this car. But in Christ, we're called to be one. And so, you know, what you see in this story is what's natural in life. There's strife between people. Now, now we could say, okay, well, you know, get along. Learn how to learn how to share some of your 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 saw or your fodder with 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 my cow and everything else because the two were were starting to conflict. But at the same time, you guys, God does use conflict. And, and he does use it to move us out and to get us to places that he wants us to be, right? And and so in this, you do see the sovereign hand of God. You know, Abraham left his family and he was the one called out by himself to be the father of a great nation. And 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 sometimes in the in, in the pursuit of what God wants in your life, God does bring people in your life for a season and we latch on. And so God uses humanity and the things, the broken parts of humanity to accomplish his will. And so there's strife there and they go their way. And and, and it's interesting. We were talking in the break, Mike, is that when, when they went their way, you know, I love, I love what, what, how, how it took place. You know, it was clear time to separate. And so Abraham says to Lot, you choose, right? That there is a deep trust in God that whatever you choose, God's going to bless me the other way, right? And 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 so Lot looks out and he does what all of us do. He looks at the well-watered land and he says, man, I, I, I want the best for me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so he chooses the best for him. And Abraham's faith says, whatever you choose, it doesn't matter because God's still going to hold me. He's still going to bless me. And, and in those two, side by side, you see those two reactions in every person. You see the part that's very selfish, where we look out for ourselves, where we're going to choose our needs over somebody else's needs. It's the lot in us that says, ha, I'm going to choose what I see. But then also in the believer, that is, there's the faith part that says, God, I just trust you. If, if, if you give me the sagebrush, you'll cause it to be green grass in a year, right? And so that's what I kind of see starting off here is this deep trust. If Abraham's the father of faith, you see it exhibited right here. I'm going to take whatever God gives me and know that it's going to be good. Mm. Well, here's the thing, though, with Abraham and Lot, though. Abraham's the older dude. Mm. Abraham, by all rights, should have first pick. Right. I mean, he's the he's the guy where God said, here's all my promises. They're going to come from you. Lot being the younger, culturally speaking, 
that was a great gesture on mm. Abraham's part, right? But Lot should have said, "Oh no, 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 my brother or whatever, he, 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 uncle, that it should not." Yeah, be maybe this Abraham way. was expecting that. <laughs> well, that's kind of what I'm wondering. I mean, this must have been a huge breach of etiquette at the mm. very least. And Lot's like, "Okay, <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah." And I just sure. wonder if that has a little bit to do with it. There just seemed to be some irreverence between. Well, like just how he regarded Abraham, he just mm. saw the opportunity and decided to take it. Uh, at least that's that's kind of where I'm seeing this, because usually yeah. in Eastern cultures, don't they have a thing like when Abraham was trying to purchase a piece of property? Right. And he's like, oh, I will purchase this for this price. And then the, the other guy says, oh, no, no. Who am I? To, you know, I'll just give it to you. And then right. Abraham goes back and says, oh, well, how about I'll give it to you for this price? And then the other guy goes, well, if you wanted to, you know, if I were to sell it to someone else. I mean, but there's like this dance that happens yeah. in the Eastern cultures. Right. There's no dance here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, the other thing, too, is 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 that, you know, Abraham, you know, is in a place where if you look at just before this, you know, he does the right thing, showing his heart's turned towards God. He builds an altar. He builds an altar in recognition of God. And so we know Abraham was in this place where he was completely and wholly trusting God. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think oftentimes when we're in that place, we come up with difficult situations where we're not sure, right? And we throw fleeces out before the Lord sometimes too. Like, God, which way do I go? I don't want to mess this up, right? And so and so maybe, you know, we're not told, but but maybe that was also there. It was like, look, Lord, I'm going to just trust you, but, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to trust your will is going to be in whatever he chooses, you're going to give me, and that's going to be the best part, right? Mm -hmm. who, who knows what was going through his mind? But I will tell you this, there is a huge lesson in this story as well, is, is things aren't always as they seem and the grass is always greener over the septic tank right <laughs> and and the truth is that that lot looked with his eyes and what you have here is a lesson on faith one chose with his eyes and scripture says that the life of faith we don't look at that which is seen we look at that which is unseen and so Lot is indicative of the person who lives and chooses things based on what they see. And Abraham says, I'm going to give what, you know, I'm going to take what God gives me. Well, Lot made a choice. And what he found out is, is behind the greenery, behind the lights, behind all of that stuff was the foulest and sickest culture that probably existed during that day. And God's explanation of that is seen in his judgment of that. And so, and so I think we need to be real careful that, that when we're, making choices in life that we're not simply making choices based on what seems to be the obvious, right? Because oftentimes the obvious is wrong. I'll give you a case in point. We looked at this yesterday when, when in first Kings chapter two, when, when, um, or in, in chapter one, when Adonijah rose up, Solomon's brother made himself King. He threw a party in his honor and you know who went the commander of the army went Joab and this guy named Abathar, the priest went, the guy who should have had discernment. He caught all the right people around him. Well, later on, when he found out that the father, David, had anointed the son Solomon and put him on his mule and put his crown on him and sat him on the throne, he stepped down and the party dismantled. Well, Solomon then goes to Abathar and he says, because you've done this, buddy, um, you should die, but I'm going to give you early retirement because you carried the ark. In other words, Abathar, you were at the wrong party. Now, in fairness to Abathar, he probably looked out and he saw the obvious. He said, oh, look, this guy's coming in on a chariot. This guy's coming in on a donkey, right? This, th this guy over here is coming in with horsemen. This guy's coming in with servants. This guy's got, got the commander of the army. He's got the people. Look at this massive celebration. Well, of course, that must be the will of God, right? Looking with your eyes. But wait a minute. It wasn't because while one man was coronating himself, the father was coronating the son Solomon and he was at the wrong party. And so I think we need to be super careful with this because, man, our eyes look at they, they lust after first John chapter two, verse 15 says the the lust of the eyes, right, is not of the father. It's of this world. And so we need to be careful with this because oftentimes behind the green grass is 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 the the septic tank like mm -hmm. i said and, and lot found that out sound and gomorrah yeah yeah let's talk about that septic tank because a lot of us don't know the story either i mean mm. we, we we're learning maybe a lot of the stuff for the or we've heard bits and pieces of it so why is lot's decision to go to the valley where it's green and beautiful and lush why is that a bad decision well, there's two things happening here. Number one, you know, you don't want to, we don't want to only focus on Lot because the, the truth is this was Abraham's journey. And that's the focus is 
Abraham, the man of faith, was letting God decide his outcome. And so let's let's make sure we grab onto that. In that, though, we see the humanity come through in Lot in choosing with his eyes. Now, Peter will go on to say that something that's very troubling for a lot of people, that Lot was a righteous man whose soul was vexed every day. And oftentimes we hear studies saying, well, you know, Lot was a compromiser. He was this. He was that. You know, Genesis doesn't tell us that. It tells us the story, and then we fill in the gaps with the most obvious. But you can't leave out the fact that he was a righteous man whose soul was vexed. And so here's what it seems to be, is that Lot made a bad choice. And like many of us, when we make a bad choice, we find ourselves in a place where we never really intended to be. And so we're trying to live out the righteousness as, you know, in, in our lives in this dark place. You see that come out when, when, when the men of the city wanted to take the, the two angels, right? And Lot came out and he said, don't do this wicked thing. He, he defined wickedness. So there was a righteousness in him and a discernment that said this is right and wrong, you know. But at the same time, now he's in this compromising place because of this, this decision he made. He sat in the gates of the city, which means that, that he, was, he was a ruler. The men even alluded. Who made you judge over us? So, so lots in this place where he's, he's seeing this depravity. He's trying to live out, you know, this righteousness that's in him, but his decision put him in a compromising place. And when you get in a compromising place, more compromise comes right now. Now you start making these dumb decisions as a righteous person that, well, you know, here, take my daughter. And then after that, Hey, let's give birth to three nations and get drunk. I mean, it's just, you know, it, it ended bad for a righteous man who meant well, but judged with his eyes and didn't trust God. Um, with that. And so I, I think I think we can look at that, but we always have to hold on to the stories about Abraham mm. and the building of a nation and the people of God. Mm, that's so good. Hey, you're listening to Key Radio. We're going to go to some more music. And again, if you have a question or a, an observation you want to share, please let us know. Give us a text, 855-539-4583. That's 855-KEY-GLUE. Hey. <laughs> the, hey. <laughs> Get to go. Hey. That was that was my enthusiastic. Hey, that's great. <laughs> Let me try again. Hey, that's oh, much better. I felt that. <laughs> Key radio life unlocked, truth unleashed. Mike and Heather in the morning with Pastor Steve Pearson. And Grant don't forget Grant. Oh yeah, yeah, you got Grant. Totally yeah. good. We're talking about Abraham and Lot and their their oh they Abraham was called out and so they went. He took his nephew Lot with him. Mm-hmm. And is there any detail on why he took his nephew a lot with him? I think it was just part of the family. Hey, folks, let's go on a road trip. Yeah, God's sending us somewhere. I don't know where, but we're just going to follow (laughs) him. So they get kind of where they're going here. And Mm -hmm. and, uh, Lot, Lot's people, shepherds and what have you, are fighting with Abrahams. They both, you know, had a lot of stuff at that point. This town isn't big enough for the two of us. That's kind of the idea. And then it says, Abram said to Lot, let there be no strife between you and me and between your herdsmen and my herdsmen, for we are kinsmen. Is not the whole land before you? Separate yourself from me. If you take the left hand, then I will go to the right. Or if you take the right hand, then I will go to the left. And Lot lifted up his eyes and saw that the Jordan Valley was well watered everywhere, like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt in the direction of Zoar. This was before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, by the way. That's a little parenthesis there. So Lot chose for himself all the Jordan Valley, and Lot journeyed east. Thus they separated from each other. Abram settled in the land of Canaan, while Lot settled among the cities of the valley and moved his tent as far as Sodom. And then it just says, and now the men of Sodom were wicked, great sinners against the Lord. But then afterwards, the Lord has this little discussion with Abram. And by the way, we say Abraham, um, God changed Abraham's name. Before it was Abraham, it was Abram. Right. Okay, so don't get confused. Um, you're like, what? I see Abram. That's a different name. Well, um, don't worry. It's the same dude. Uh, the Lord said to Abram, after Lot had separated from him, lift up your eyes and look from the place where you are, northward and southward and eastward and westward, for all the land that you see, I will give to you and to your offspring forever. And he goes on to say, I will make your offspring as the dust of the earth so that if one can count the dust of the earth, your offspring also could be counted. <laughs> I just kind of <laughs> love that little detail in there. So what exactly is the Lord saying to Abram during this time? Well, <clears throat> I think it's interesting. If you go back to chapter 12 and you look at the call, I want you to listen to this. Chapter 12, verse 1. Now the Lord said to Abram, 
go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. Verse four. So Abraham went as the Lord had told him and Lot went with him. So, so God says, go away from your kindred, your family, your father's house to this land that I'm going to show you. That's, that's the, you know, in Hebrews 11, it would, it would define that as, as, and Lot or, and Abraham went out not knowing where he was going. So there's the life of faith. You called, I'm going to trust, but here's what mankind does. Go from your kindred and your father's house. Okay. To the life that I'm going to show you. Hey, Lot, you want to come with me? <laughs> <laughs> so, so there wasn't a hundred percent obedience there. It, it, you know, I don't know why, but here's what you do. see. you see a picture of, of how, when we choose to take a little bit of, you know, a little bit in our, in our journey of faith with us that judges things by what they see, right? Lot looked at what we see. At some point, God's going to separate that from us. We are not going to be able to take both into this life of faith. We can't, we can't both judge with our eyes and, and, and choose with our eyes and our emotions that which is best for us and at the same time follow God in this life of faith. So there's a separation that takes place. But it's interesting. Abraham wasn't, wasn't you know completely faultless in this because in chapter 12, it says in verse 10, that as he's going to this place, there's a famine in the land. And what does it say? It says, so Abraham, because of the famine, went down to Egypt. Mm -hmm. Okay. You always go down to Egypt. Okay. Egypt is a great type of the world, right? We're called out of Egypt, right? We're told to leave it all behind. Abraham goes down to Egypt because there doesn't seem to be any food. But while down in Egypt, he experiences something that almost costs him his marriage, you know, where, where Pharaoh basically wants to, wants to take his wife. Okay. Then after that experience, chapter 13, verse one, so Abraham went up from Egypt and he ends up being at this, at this, uh, at this place called Bethel, where he had built this altar before he went down to Egypt. So, so picture the scene, the life of faith is where God will separate that, which, which which we choose with our eyes. He's going to separate that from us. The lot has to go, right? And and in the process of that, we're going to make decisions where we're going to judge the things around us and go, uh-oh, I got to go down to Egypt for help, only to find out that we could lose a lot there. We come back up from Egypt to the place that we started, the altar, and then Abraham learned something. You know what? I'm not going to judge things by its looks anymore. Hey, Lot, what do you want? Hmm. God's going to God, God's going to provide for me. And I think we all experience that in our life where we don't come out of the box assembled, Mike and Heather, like this life of faith. Oh, I just have this great faith. No, you don't. You, you grow into that faith, right? And you grow by making trips to Egypt that you should have never made, coming back to the place where you started and said, boy, that was dumb. Okay, God, I'm going to trust you. What do you want me to do now? And, and that's exactly what happens here. And so when Abraham says, hey, Lot, you choose, Remember, it comes on the heels of him making his own decisions and realizing they didn't work out. It came full circle. I'm back to the place I was before. God, what do you want me to do? And and, and that's a learning experience, you guys. Mm. And what, what can we learn about God from this too? And we will look at verse 14 where, where uh, God says, you know, this is all yours. I'm going to give this all to you, Abraham. Yeah. I mean, r regardless of what Lot chose, this was all going to be Abraham's given to him by a sovereign God. And I think that's one thing we could take away that God is in control and everything belongs to God. Yeah. It, it, you know, I, I, I see a couple things here. Number one, God let Abraham go down to Egypt, right? He let him learn. He let him come back up so that he would come to the place where he had sacrificed in the beginning at Bethel and he would realize, I need to let God choose for me. And then in the realization that God would choose for him, he realized what he had all the time. It was, hey, God's going to give me all of this no matter what. And so you guys, learning the goodness of God is a lifetime experience that God has a life of faith for us and it's not natural for us we want to we want to go to egypt because there's the food the foods in egypt and 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 god has to let us go at times to burn us so that we can come back and go okay i don't want to go to egypt anymore that that was a ploy right to bring us to the place where he can separate the lot out of our life that wants to look at everything that's seen and when that happens mike we realize man i had it all the whole time god god had it for me the whole time you know that's a journey. Mm -hmm. 
Well, and the fact, like Mike, you were saying, too, that the Lord had promised Abram all the land. So, you know, it, it, when you put your faith in the Lord and let him guide your steps, we're not going to thwart them, number one. If we make a decision and let's say Abram's like, man, I think God wants me to have all of this, um, but I'm going to take the good stuff um, because otherwise God might not give me the whole land or whatever a little silly human brains think. The point mm-hmm. is, no matter if, if God has his mindset on something, uh, he's going to he's going to do it. He's going to uh, achieve those promises that he made because he is a promise maker and a promise keeper. And so it's just very interesting that Abram at this point in his life, this was an expression of his faith into uh, in, in a God who is showing his love. And let that be a lesson to all of us, too, because in our lives, like, what Steve, you were saying, it's a journey. It's a walk. We change though. God never changes. His goodness is always good. His purposes are always good. We are the ones who change. And the only way that we can really like to have that change is to come humbly before our Lord and recognize that he is sovereign. He is good. He is perfect. And that we just need to follow him. And part of that is that relationship. Plugging Mm. into the Lord on a daily, minute-by-minute basis a lot of times. Just recognizing the Lord is in everything. He's in the big things. He's definitely in the small things as well. Uh, Mm. And we need to have a relationship with Him so we can have that sensitive ear to listen to Him and to allow Him to guide us where we need to be. And there is an amazing picture of the gospel in this as well. I don't know if we want to do that on the other side of the music, but it is, it is an amazing picture. Mm -hmm. You know what? Let's do it now. I just real, this is so important and I don't, I don't want to tease this. So, (laughs) so when God makes the covenant with Abraham, okay, it's a covenant of faith and, you know, he's pulling Abraham out by himself, right? He separates what should have never went with him from the beginning, right? That's what God does. God separate, he spends our life separating us, you know, from the things that, that would keep us from faith, right? And so what does God do in making this covenant with Abraham? You know, in those days when you made a covenant with somebody, um, it's pictured here in Genesis, you would, you would make a covenant, you would, you would sacrifice an animal, you'd split them open, and then the two halves, you and the person you're making the covenant with, would walk through the middle of those as if you guys were saying, look, um, may this be done to me or you if I don't fulfill my end of the covenant, right? And so what does God do to this man of faith? He puts him to sleep, and he makes this, 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 he gives us this picture of these sacrifices that are opened up, and rather than Abraham walking through with God, God walks through himself, mm-hmm. and it, God is making a statement there that this covenant of faith is not based on you keeping it, it's based on me keeping it. In other words, God's saying, I'm making the covenant with me, not necessarily you. And the beautiful picture of that is found in Christ. God made a covenant with the son and it was, I will give you, Hebrew says, a body and you will go down and you will pay for the sins of man. And that covenant, listen, has nothing to do with them. It's between you and I. Now we're going to call them into that by faith, but it doesn't have anything to do with them. I'm making the agreement because if I make it with them, they'll break it. (laughs) <laughs> they have shown they'll break it. And then what happens? It all falls apart. But if I make it with myself, you know, and it, that's where it's scripture says, and when, when he, when he swore, he swore by no one greater. There, there, there's, there's no one greater he could swear by. So he swore by himself. Look at, I, I'm a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. I'm going to do this. And so for us, you guys, when we talk about the covenant of grace, it is a covenant that the father makes with the son and extends to us to become a part of it. Um, but it is Christ's work that purchases us. It is not our work. It is not my righteousness plus Christ's righteousness, right? When God sees me, he sees the imputed righteousness of Christ because the covenant was with the son Mm -hmm. and he invites me into it. And if I simply by faith say, yes, God will separate the lot from me, but I will be left alone with the blessings of God, which is eternal life in Christ, not in my works. And so the gospel in this is beautiful. The life of faith ultimately stands by itself and, and, and God makes the covenant and calls him into it. And mm-hmm. so, 
That's so good. And it's that's awesome. why we can know we have eternal life because it's not based on us. Right. It's based on what God has done. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah. That's, that's so right. Good. Hey, we're going to go to one more song and then we're going to uh, wrap things up. You are listening to Key Radio, Mike and Heather in the Morning with Pastor Steve Pearson. Key Radio, Life Unlocked, Truth Unleashed. Pastor Steve, you talked about this righteousness being imputed to us from Christ and Christ taking our sins. Uh, how do we get that? How do we be part of that? It doesn't happen just automatically because I know I'm a sinner and, and hmm. I just live it, in it's sin. Not, now you're just miserable because now you know it. But what yeah. do you do? <laughs> hmm. Well, I'll tell you, you know, later on, Abraham would be called to do something of great faith. He would be called to offer his son Isaac on an altar. Um, and, and when he goes to sacrifice him, um, he raises his hand, an angel of the Lord stops him, and he says, um, now because you've obeyed to this point, you've had that much faith knowing that even if he died, God was able to raise him again. Um, he said, I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep that from happening, and, and God provides himself a sacrifice right there. But then he says to Abraham in Genesis 22, he says that because of this and your obedience in your seed, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. Seed, singular. Mm -hmm. When you go to Galatians 3, it tells us that that seed is Christ. And so this is a picture of, yes, the immediate, but of something that's more far and greater. That, That Abraham's the father of many nations, of course, okay, but it's in his seed, the seed of Christ, that that all the nations of the earth would be blessed. And so what does that mean? It means that that in man's brokenness from the garden, in their inability to save themselves, God stepped into time from eternity in the person of Jesus Christ. That's a magnificent thing, Emmanuel, God with us. And in doing so, grew up and took upon himself the sins of mankind. There's the seed that all the nations of the world would be blessed. And if you put your faith in your trust, not in your broken attempts to be good and righteous through church attendance and church giving and all the other things that humanity lays on you, if you put your trust in the giving of God, of his son to you, then you can be saved. And here's the reality. Jesus died for you. Okay. God will judge you personally. He will separate you from everything and everyone else. And you will stand before God and give an account Are you a part of the seed of Abraham, which is Christ by faith or not? It is a personal judgment, a personal accountability and culpability. Put your faith in Christ and God will forgive you of all your sins. Mm -hmm. Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. Trust in him. That's it. That's it. There's nothing else that you do to be saved again because Jesus paid it all. That's right. More information on that on our website, keyradio.org. Click on the eternal life button. Mm Mm-hmm. What are we doing? So, Pastor Steve, what do you teach it on these days? We're going through First Kings, and we're talking about one step forward, two steps back. We meet every Sunday uh, morning at 1030 a.m. at Vista Heights Middle School in Saratoga Springs. You can go to rhutah.church if you want to come and plan your visit, and we'll be waiting for you with a, a gift and a personal tour guide. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's cool. Awesome. Yeah. I like chocolate, too, and donuts, so I'm <laughs> just letting you know. My friend, thank you so much for letting us be a part of your day. I hope that you were as blessed as I was today in our conversation. You, my friend, read your Bible, and thanks for listening to Key Radio. This has been Mike and Heather in the Morning, a production of Key Radio, located in beautiful Provo, Utah. For more information about the program and the ministries of Key Radio, check out our website, keyradio.org. On behalf of Mike, Heather, and the entire Key Radio staff, have a blessed and glorious day.